Hello, I'm Callum Dilietto, and this is the second season of the Flock Together podcast in partnership with the Marn Convention Bureau. And we are here at the Langham, and I'm joined by Kelsey. How are you? I am so good. How are you? I'm good. You're actually in Langham colours as well. I know. I feel like I really understood the assignment today. You did. Yeah. Even your nails. I know. Very, yeah. very proud to be here at the Langham with you. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you. We first met uh, on a trip in Dublin. Yes, that's true. And I was convinced that it was in 2023, but it was actually in 2022. So Yeah, it was ages time, ago. Yeah, time has really, really flown by. But yeah. it's been, yeah, it's been a crazy ride. <laughs> And it's been an absolute pleasure getting to know you. I think you're you're smashing it in every every way. I thank you, thank you. Couldn't be doing it without inspirational venues and obviously our fearless leaders. So it's going it's going really well. We're busy, but it's going really really well. The first part of the podcast is mm. a letter to the industry. Mm. What would your letter be? I did give this I did give this some thought, but I think the one that springs to mind is really just how expensive London has gotten over the last two years. And I think that being a you know business hub and a financial sort of epicenter for all sorts of corporate travel, the business and the demand will always be there. So the incentive for hotels and venues to kind of bring down their rates might not be. But what we are seeing is that some of those sort of longer lead events, those huge events, they're really starting to, having historically been in London, they're really starting to think about kind of moving out of London and going somewhere in Europe or even into the Middle East. You know, I think we've done one where we actually put forward Oman recently. So I really would love to keep kind of chatting to hotels about really kind of negotiating those rates. I don't think that you can get a five star bedroom for under 600 pounds now. So. That's something that I really want to keep keep at the forefront of negotiations with hotels, keep the conversation alive and really make sure that we're getting not just the sort of transient business travel in, but that we're keeping London as a destination for those larger meetings kind of forefront. Yeah. It's really interesting that because I was speaking to someone the other day and it felt like the COVID Brexit impact that it had on the London hotel scene, you know, being understaffed and and therefore not being able to operate at full capacity mm. and therefore upping their prices, etc. Mm. It felt like since those issues have potentially been remedied, the pricing hasn't adjusted. It's still stayed at that straight out of COVID pricing structure, which is potentially what you're talking about in terms of... Yeah, food. absolutely. And I think as well, like we're not seeing such a huge rise in like food and beverage and day delegate rates, but things like room hire costs and extra, you know, those additional ancillary costs as well are moving through the roof. And I can definitely see that clients are starting to notice and starting to put the brakes on those kinds of events because of those fees. So yeah, absolutely. Just want to keep it keep it going with the negotiation station but mm. <laughs> good news for all those second tier cities but bad mm. news for for the capital 100 percent, yeah the next part of the podcast is about remembering mm -hmm. uh, so firstly i'd like you to remember the first ever work trip that you went on abroad well i'm, I'm I, the first one was actually dublin where oh. you and i met callum um and it was I'm not even sure, I've been to several other locations since and, you know, Dublin is just the most fun, you know, and I feel like being my first trip and I just moved here from South Africa as well, it was the best one to go on because I really do feel that the group of people that Anne-Marie and Emma put together and experiencing Dublin with that group of people was such a confidence builder. It was so much fun. We just had the best time. And I've, you know, kept relationships from that trip ever since. So we were staying at Castle Knock. We went to Temple Bar. We really got into it with Guinness and the whole Irish experience. So that was definitely the first one. And I'll never forget that because it was such a, it was such a great introduction to the industry. So what I'm hearing is that was the best trip you've been on because I was there. That's what I'm hearing. Yes, Callum. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, it was so great because of the people. And I'm like, mm -hmm, it was so yeah. great because Callum was there. <laughs> no, it was a fantastic trip. And actually, as someone who has family in Ireland and I go over there often, I don't often go to Dublin. Um, and when I have, I've been in and out. But I really appreciated the destination at that time. And I yeah. thought, and the group was great. It the was. group was great, yeah. yeah. And the, everyone that we met there was so cool. Yeah, but it was, it was a great hotel as well. Mm. Yeah, really fun. And what was the most recent work trip you've been on abroad? Actually, the most recent one was to Oman. Uh, it was three days and four nights. We stayed at Kempinski with Invoyage. And I was utterly surprised by how amazing I found the destination. Um, the opportunities there for 
for business and incentives and their sort of program that they've got you know in the pipeline at the moment for 2040 I think is the is the target I was utterly blown away we had dinners at you know the W at Shangri-La in like a crater that was doubling as a helicopter pad it was it was so sparkly it was so fancy and yet the people that we spoke to and the women that we spoke to actually especially they were really showcasing the the country and the idea of being able to go into the mountains and spend the day with a local tribe of people who really don't want anything to do with modern society but they're so open and so friendly and so welcoming about teaching you what they do there um, we went snorkeling with turtles I mean where else you know so Oman was was completely breathtaking for me it's really beautiful and I think what I love about it is as a Middle Eastern destination it's very natural it's very authentic it's got like lots of natural beauty whereas I think often when you think of the Middle East you think of these like man-made incredible impressive skyscrapers and, mm. and you know structures but I love the nature side of Oman. Yeah absolutely not as much glass and fast cars as one would kind of imagine in the Middle East but yeah it was it was really really gorgeous there. <laughs> The next part of the podcast is about revisiting. So if you could go back in time and, and revisit a destination, it doesn't necessarily have to be a work, a work trip, but just a particular experience you had in a destination, which would it be? I hesitate to sound like a broken record, but genuinely Oman. I mean, I'm from Cape Town, so I would always want to go to Cape Town. And there's so much in Cape Town to see and to do, whether it's with a small group or a large conference. Um, you know, the wine, the beaches, the mountain. But um, I think I think Oman. I'm, I'm dying to get back there. Wow. Yeah, because there were certain things that I knew that were happening during that very short in and out trip that I thought, oh, next time I'm here, I need to definitely get that in. So 100% hands down Oman. I feel bad to say it talking to a South African. I've never been to South Africa. Absolutely shocking. <laughs> I am, no, we must fix this. No, you have to go Cape Town specifically and then obviously onto safari. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, I it's I've I have done safari, I've done, I've done Tanzania, mm -hmm. um, but South Africa, I've there's been maybe one or two times where I've nearly gone and then it just hasn't happened, but it's it's on my bucket list. It's on your bucket list. Yeah. Well, when you go, let me know because I've got all the sushi spots, wine spots. I know, I got you. Nice. And if you could make any hotel a home, what would it be? Mm, I think recently I was at the Four Seasons in Prague and Four Seasons, you know, being a global brand, you, you kind of know what you're going to be on the receiving end of. But I was struck by how personable and friendly everybody was. By the time I left, I was only there for a long weekend. By the time I left, I knew the concierge by name, I knew Ivan at the door, you know, I knew Michaela and Natalie and the sales team, and they just made it feel like a home away from home, and the hotel was gorgeous, the spa was, oh, stunning. Um, so yeah, definitely that would be top of the list at the moment. I do think there's something special about, it, it doesn't matter where the hotel is or how luxurious it is, but if the people are particularly friendly. Do you know, I, I say the same about when you arrive at a destination. I kind of judge a destination by the cab driver. Like, mm. I get out of the airport, I get into the car, and if the cab driver is really friendly, I'm immediately in, like, a, a more positive frame of mind. And I think it's the same with hotels. If you come in and the concierge is lovely and you feel at home, it really does make a difference. So. Yeah, that first impression is, is the stamp. Yeah, absolutely. The next part of the podcast is an opportunity to kind of challenge yourself to create an incentive trip, not for your clients, but for yourself. Like, and 
it can be once in a lifetime, you know, let your imagination run wild, but where would you go? What would you do? And which celebrity would accompany you? Um, hmm. I would go to Iceland. Nice. I would go to Iceland for myself. Um, I would go because I want to do the, the waterfalls and the springs, the hot springs. I want to see the Icelandic ponies. Um, I want to see the northern lights. I would want to do all of those different activities. Um, I know that Iceland's doing a lot around sustainability as well, so I would feel less guilty about my impact on the universe going there. And um, in terms of a celebrity guest, I know all of my friends and colleagues, if they listen to this, they'll assume that I would say Ariana Grande. I do love Ariana I Grande. I love Ariana Grande, so I that's a good Ariana one. I love Ariana Grande. Um, but actually, I would definitely have Ariana Grande music playing. But I think I would take somebody like Emilia Clarke Ooh. from Game of Thrones. Yeah. I know a little bit about the personal struggles that she's gone through in the launching of her career. And while I do something completely different to what she does, I feel like I could probably learn a lot about her personal strength. And I think that she's really funny. Mm. I think that we would probably just have a blast. She does come across as like, like someone I would like to just spend time with. Like she does come across as funny. And also you'd be in Iceland. I feel like you could reenact some Game of Thrones scenes. Like Easily. It's very, it's very like dragon-y. Absolutely, <laughs> 100%. And I think, you know, a glass of Prosecco, some snow, I, I would absolutely, yeah, Khaleesi and Kelsey, we would, we'd get on, we'd get on just fine. I Khaleesi think. and Kelsey, I like that. Mm, I mm. think we'd have a, a really good time. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> So the final part of the podcast is a quick fire round. Uh, some questions for you to react to at, at speed. Okay. Don't be too nervous. Prepare. You're okay. Got this. Packing, last minute or week before? Absolutely last minute. Good, me too. <laughs> Down to the wire. <laughs> Although it's probably bad if we ever go on a trip together because then it would just be chaos. Chaos. Um, carry on or check in? Always check in. Airport lounge or shopping? Mm, shopping. Aisle or window seat? Always the window. Always the window, me too. City or nature? City. I'm surprised by that. I'm surprised by because that. Because you also talked about Icelandic ponies, because for those that don't know, you're, you're, you're a horsey girl, mm -hmm. but you say city. Mm. I love the going and finding out about the history and the architecture and the food and the buildings and the mm. chaos and the vibe of a city. I do love that, especially for a weekend break. Yeah, that's very true. I'll give you that. Uh, Lay-in or early start? Early start. Poolside or seaside? Poolside. Planned or spontaneous? Ooh, got to strike the balance between both on those. Got to strike the balance. I can't pick one. Okay, it's be... you're going to be on the fence for that one. Yeah, I've got to be on the fence for that one. <laughs> breakfast, hot or cold? Cold breakfast. Okay. Mm. And finally, hotel room service or hotel restaurant? Room service. <laughs> you said that with like... Like a... So delicious. <laughs> Room service. Absolutely hands down. <laughs> Amazing. Well, thank you so much. And I feel like we should get the, the hashtag Kelsey and Khaleesi trending so that maybe that can happen. I mean, I'm on board with it. And mm. thank you so much for, for hosting us and having me. And I, I feel very privileged and very honoured to be here. Thank you. Oh, thank you for becoming part of the flock. Ah, flock together. <laughs> <laughs>